everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome back to Painted. I haven't done a live. I've been cutting back my lives a little bit lately. I've been really, really busy. As everybody knows, I'm uh, working on opening up uh, a brick and mortar studio, painting studio, and I am every day a step closer. Today has been a good day, so I'm pretty happy about it. Ooh, my glasses are sitting weird on my head and that's catching glare. Um, so the excitement is that we have things going really well. Hey Heather, nice to see you. Um, the, 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 the challenge with any new business is that nothing moves as fast as I do. Um, so like I'm ready to open the doors tomorrow basically. Um, but of course I'm at the whim of contractors and builders and permits and town hall and all of that stuff. But I'm going to keep going and eventually we'll get there. Maybe not on my schedule. I may have to work with the government schedule, but it's all going well. Yay. Okay. So I want to remind everybody I have an upcoming class in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, I'm teaching a furniture class called Fabulous Furniture Finishes um, in Greensboro, North Carolina at the IDOL convention on... October 21st. Uh, it's going to be a great time. If you're not a member of IDOL, I suggest you check it out. I will put the link to IDOL in this post once this posts firmly to my page. And it is www.decorativeartisans.org. Yes, it is a organization that focuses on the business and fine arts of decorative finishes, faux finishes, and um, creative finishing. Lots of different ways to say very similar things, but actually they're all a little different. So today we are going to start working on this chest that is behind me. Hang on, Let's look down there. You can see I've kind of taken some steps into this. I have uh, tripods everywhere right now, so hopefully I can get this so you can all see. And I picked this up for a song, had some repairs to do. There's chunks out of the wood, I've done that. I've actually uh, refinished the top. I'm gonna angle towards me, sorry for my hand. And I'm kinda gonna work this in a Mackenzie Child style. Um, for those not familiar with Mackenzie Childs, they do a lot of checkerboard patterns, very hand-painted, whimsical, but um, not crazy fluffy, but heavily patterned. Um, so this piece lent itself to it because it already has a lot of this texture and pattern. If you look in here, let me get a close-up going. You can see in here we have this medallion and details on here. And at one point this was painted. You can see some of the red in here and it's rubbed off here and this was black. And it's been all kinds of colors. And if you look a little higher... We've got a lot of detail here. There's also detail in these corner pieces here. And you can see I put some paint on and it's not, ooh, it's a little too close on me. Uh, let's get that smaller. I don't need to see my jaw that well. Um, but as you can see, this already has the, the detailing that's con, uh, common in Mackenzie Child's pieces. So I thought I'd kind of zhuzh it up a little bit, make it really um, spectacular. This is old. Um, the lady I bought it from said it belonged to her grandmother, um, but there has been a lot of damage to it. So it's really not in a place to be restored antique style. It really has to be done a new finish to be, well, boy, nice English I speak today. Um, it, it's really in a place where a new finish needs to be put on it because it has been so heavily damaged. Um, I have cleaned it. I have scrubbed it. I've cleaned it again. Final wipe down with denatured alcohol to determine what the original finish is. And something this old, I was pretty sure it was either going to be varnish or shellac. I was right. Shellac. Tinted shellac. Um, and it was dirty and discolored. And then I put a coat of Faux Effects Prime Etch on it because, again, belt and suspenders person that I am, I like an extra bonding layer. Set coat is generally strong enough as it is, but I have this 
overwhelming fear of um, doing something, getting something not quite right and having things chip off. And I will tell you why. Because in nearly 30 years of doing this, it's, I am about to enter my 29th year in finishing, um, I have never once had a piece fail. And it's because I'm really OCD about my basic layers. Um, the only time, well, I've never had a piece that I have sold to anybody fail. I've had plenty of my own fail because I got lazy. And that's how I learned I don't do that sort of thing. So I'm gonna bring you over here. We'll talk about how I manage the prep, some of the ideas that I'm doing with it, and then we'll do some painting. And hopefully I can do this. I'm on a new tripod here and it does strange things that I'm not used to. Hi Shay, Lisa, yeah, it is a beautiful piece. All right, let me get you over to this tripod and there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna aim this down and then I'm gonna get my iPad so that I can actually see anything you have to say. So give me just a second, I had it open to it. And that didn't work because I gave the wrong password. Okay, come on. Sometimes it's just not that easy. All right, now let me refresh this and see if I can find myself. Um, yeah, with the volume turned down. We keep learning the hard way that I leave the volume up and then I have to listen to myself. And I had this set up and of course it doesn't want to do it now. So let's see if it'll pop me up. See, I'm just doing that. Okay, well that's gonna spin a minute and I'm gonna bring my stool over. So, scoop some stuff out of the way here so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh look, there I showed up now. All right. Yay. Oh great, I got smaller. Wow, it's still loud. Even though I turned the volume down. Okay. And let's see. Of course it doesn't want to work the way I need it to. Let's try this way. Maybe I can see something. Here we go. So, oh, you love this that'll turn on the iPad while turning away for the code. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. You can't actually see what code because I typed it in wrong three times because I'm that smart. Oh, I, Heather, thank you. I'm glad you, I'm looking forward to the end results too. All right, so let's get here. This top was originally pretty crusty, dinged up, beaten up, um, really rough. And so while I sanded and cleaned it, I didn't. I still had this rough, coarse te texture that wasn't going to make a great top. So I filled it in with Venetian Gem Black Onyx. It, Venetian Gem is a faux effects product that um, is a synthetic Venetian plaster, but it also it dries super hard. So I can fill in this surface and then sand it back once it's dry and get a really nice smooth surface. Now I'm not worrying if it's not perfect because the rest of the piece is not perfect. I just need it to be not as bad as it was. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is paint the whole top with Faux Effects Set Coat Black. Um, wow, I'm gonna have to move some things around because I guess I maybe shouldn't paint my iPad black. Although I already poured set coat, I mean poured a um, primate on it this week once, so <laughs> I'm doing really well with the product issues. All right, I'm gonna pull out a pair of gloves. One, two. Yes, look, everybody, be proud of me. I'm actually putting on gloves. I'm trying really hard to be better about that. Usually, the the biggest reason is because I grab grab something with paint covered hands. And it makes a mess. So, open my gallon of set coat black. And if you look at these, this gets crusty around here, so regularly I pull this out. But I don't take it out of this big container because the seal on it is better than anything else. I'm going to move my iPad over. Yes, Lisa, I've got gloves. I'm so, are you, aren't you all excited? I finally put on gloves. And I'm hand painting this. I could spray it. I could roll it. But this is a truly hand-painted finish, so I'm going this way. 
and the thing is with set coat, I'm gonna stretch it. I am not putting this on thick. I am stretching it. I have some work time with this product. So I'm stretching it to get a coverage. And mind you, there will be a second layer. Um, the moisture with this Venetian gem, especially after I've sanded it, it will want to suck in pretty quickly. So I'm gonna have to work pretty fast. Um, and as you can all see, I don't use standard house painting brushes. Those who have taken class with me know that's not what I do. They, I use, where's the sign here? Dick Blick Mega Brushes. Um, I use these because I can get the stiffness or the softness that I need in the bristles. The bristles are cleaner and these run, I wanna say, oh, depending on whether they have a sale, anywhere from $10.99 to $13.99. Um, the bristles are finer, they're more compact. I tend to get everything up near the ferrule a lot more because of the way this works, but that happens. Um, and anybody who spends any time around me knows too. <coughs> Excuse me, I swallowed funny. I'm kind of a messy painter, so I'm apt to get as much on me as anything else. Like, you know, my hand here. Instead of getting it on the brush, I got it all on my fingers, and then I got it on the handle. Um, but I'm really, I'm, I'm really, really obsessed with keeping um, my brushes clean. Uh, after I'm done with them, I'm going to move this out of the way because otherwise I will paint the iPad. So whatever anybody says while I'm painting black on here. Um, I'm really, really obsessed with keeping this super clean. Um, after I'm done, I got in, I scrubbed the ferrule, I scrubbed the bristles, and uh, somebody's asking me something that I can't read right now, so you're gonna just give me a second to finish the top here, because then I'm gonna move the phone to another tripod, so you can see how I work on the sides, and then we'll do a little work on the front. Um, I'm often asked, why I choose set coat over everything else was well, first of all I'm a Fofex instructor so I've had the benefit of learning this product from the inside out and the cool thing with Fofex set coat is it's a hundred percent acrylic but it has leveling properties and curing properties like an oil-based paint so you get a much smoother finish out of it. And it, when I'm doing a product over it, if I need to glaze or anything else, um, the glaze slides across it, whereas in a lot of other paints, my issue is that the glaze will <laughs> grab into it. And then I have funky lap lines that don't make me happy. Now again, this is the first coat. It's a little uneven. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to put my brush down here. I'm going to switch our tripods. Yeah, I'm going to take the gloves off too so I can grab the phone and not hurt myself or anyone else. Give me just a second here. Switch everything around. So here we go. There's the tripod I'm going down to. All right, let me take this down. I'm reading everybody's questions. I'll respond to them in a sec. I'm gonna get this thing off here. Ah, there we go, sorry. You know, it's a challenge when I'm working on a couple different tripods at a couple different heights er, in a couple different angles. And I am still, as we all know, we've all seen me, I'm not always gifted. And I just waved at myself by doing that. Jeez, I'm so smart. All right. Um, 
So I've got the top done. And the other thing I'm going to do now is, uh, while you're watching, I'm going to address the sides here. Oh, great. I'm aiming up. You know, I need, I need a little, I need a cameraman. So I'm going to aim in here. You can see the detail in here. I didn't fill it in from the top. Why? Because I'm going to go at it from the side. So the first thing I'm going to do, put a glove back on, and I'm going to take a much, let me get it in so you can see it, a much smaller brush. Dip it into the set coat and go into the details. Because my big brush can do it, but it makes a heck of a mess. And this is easier. I get everything covered and I'm, you know, I can go back like this so I make sure I don't have any buildup around it. I get not everybody does this this way. It's how I do it. And let's see. Hi, Rhonda. Hi, Kelly. Nice to see everybody here. So I'm just quickly filling in. These little dashes, I'm not even these little dashes, I'm not even worried about the ones that are right here. Why? Because, well, first of all, they were already black. And second of all, they will fill in easily with a brush. So let me screw, pull this back out a little bit. Let's see if I can... Ugh, of course my screen doesn't want it to work as easily as I can make it work. Well, and i got to take the gloves off and do this again. Sorry, everybody. There. Now I'll back it off a little bit. So now you can see here. Um, I'm on a little tiny stool, and eventually I'll be sitting on the floor as we do this because I don't like turning my head upside down while I paint. Um, and that is a challenge with furniture, by the way. Um, that, you know, unlike walls that are straight up and down, and the worst you have to do is reach around a couple of odd corners. Um, with furniture, especially big pieces, you can end up twisting yourselves into interesting positions. All right, I've got all of those done. Take the brush back with my larger brush. And I'm going back across the surface. Now, I have not taken this off the hinges. What I can't show you in here right now is that these hinges, there's a piece of framing right here, and the hinges are actually kind of embedded under it, and I have yet to figure out how to get it apart without breaking anything. So I've just taped everything off really well, and I'm not messing with the hinges. And again, I am not one who is afraid of taking things apart, but with something this old, I can't afford for something bad to happen to it and not be able to get the parts I need for it. Um, I'm a great painter, but I am not always um, a builder. And I'll pop this up later, and I'll get in here, and I'll get this edges, all these edges up in top, up in here. I'll paint all of this. This is the old latch in here. It has a keyhole for it, sadly, you know, when you get these old pieces, you may get this beautiful thing, and it has all its parts except the key. And you hear it kind of crunches a little bit. There's actually a spring that snaps a little every time you open and close it. Get these sides. I already got these little holes on that side before. So I am going to... I could roll this around. I have these on these caster things, and I'll show those to you in a minute too, that are the best thing I ever bought for refinishing larger pieces of furniture. Let me move that, all the, move all the black stuff out of the way so I can move to another color. Um, great, fix that again. Um, 
took a quick glance to see what everybody's saying. Hi, Charlie, nice to see you. So let me aim down here at the feet. And if you can see here, and then I'll swing it here. You see, look here. These are casters with three wheels on them that you can get from Harbor Freight and you put them under the feet and then you can roll a piece heavy like this all over the place. And I have to tell you, it's a back saver. Oh, thank you, Charlie. I'm glad you like this piece too. It's a favorite of mine. I, it was a miracle find, you know, um, while well, things dry up for a second and I can stick my hand over the lens. Um, I get asked how I find pieces of furniture. If it's not something brought to me by a client, I hunt on Facebook. I don't do an awful lot of flea markets. Um, I don't do a lot of garage sales. Those are so hit or miss for me, but I'm somehow, something about being here in the Midwest, uh, in Illinois, um, between Illinois and Indiana, I see a lot of really great vintage and antique pieces that are just beat up. Um, the bones are solid, but the piece itself is beat up. And I, you know, do the do the marketplace thing and say, is this available? Can I pick it up? You know, okay, has it been around? <sighs> Let me tell you, I've learned the hard way. Always ask if it's been in a smoking house, which is manageable, but ask if there have been cats around it. Dogs don't, if they, if they wet on the piece, the urine from dogs doesn't smell as much. Cat urine? It's in wood, it doesn't want to ever penetrate, uh, or, or ever want to leave the piece. It penetrates really, really, really well, and it becomes permanent. And when you paint it and re-wet it, it becomes smellier. I don't care, I've tried sealing it with shellac, I've tried all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't do that. I, the cat stuff, whatever it is, I don't, I don't do cats. If, if there have been cats in the house, or, and even if they say, well, they, we have cats, but was never near anything that, like, that we're selling, the answer is still no, because they may not think the cat soiled on it, but I guarantee you, you'll find out if the cat sprayed, and you know, when you'll find it out, in your car, on a 100 degree day, when you stepped out to get a, like a, an iced coffee at Starbucks, you get in your car and your whole, whole, whole car smells just don't bother with anything that's been cat soiled. Um, I keep telling you, I've tried everything I can to seal up the smell and nothing really seems to work. So now that we've covered that charming subject, I'm going to go back to painting here, but you got to give me a second to get down on the floor because <laughs> I don't get down that on the floors that easily anymore. All right. And let's aim this around, aim me around aim the camera. So I've put, let's get this going in the right direction. I have put white set coat all over this once. And you see it's brushy, it's messy. Um, I haven't quite figured out how all of this is going to go together. I, some, I often do stuff like this in, in pieces to see what needs what. Um, so right now what I'm doing is painting this part white, neutral white set coat. Uh, Mackenzie Child's um, checkerboard patterns that are traditional are whiter than this, but I will probably go into the back, uh, go back into this with a little whiter white and make it a tonal white versus dead white. And then eventually I'm gonna take this checkerboard pattern and see if I can get this so you can see this against stuff. I don't know, it's bluish, it's a little hard to see. But uh, I will take this and work it in the background. I am not using a perfect, I'm using this as a guideline, meaning I'm gonna put it up here and I'm gonna lightly stencil part of the design in because this surface is so uneven. Um, I just need it to give me the shapes and the basic look and then I will hand brush all of the checkerboard in, in the traditional style that Mackenzie Childs usually does. So 
I now have next to me a gallon of white set coat. I'm gonna grab another glove. See, even without the, with the gloves on, I still managed to get it on myself just by moving stuff around. Yeah. We won't even talk about that quart of prime etch that I dumped down my front on Sunday. Two showers later and I was still peeling it off and then this morning, I thought I'd finally gotten it all off. Oh no, big blob of it on myself. So again, I am using Dick Blick Mega Brush, but this is one with the Taclon bristles. It's a little softer. And the reason I want softer is because I need to fit it in smaller places and those Taclon have just enough give to give me a smooth coat wherever I need it to go. Now, I'm not trying to get any of these corner details painted, but I don't worry if I do because I know exactly what I'm doing with them. And I know you can't see where I'm painting because I'm painting to my left and your right. So I'll come back over this way so you can see. I have to paint it all even if you can't see it. So look how smoothly this goes on. Really nice coverage. I love this neutral white. It's such a creamy color. And it spreads so nicely. And again, set coat dries to give that beautiful oil paint like finish to it. And therefore everything else I put over it will just glide. I gotta tell you, the first coat didn't glide like this coat does. This coat is already gliding really nicely. And I'm sorry, you're getting the back of my arm in an area you can't see, but I'm not, I gotta get it all. So now the, the benefit from these wheels, so again, I'm just gonna roll this side towards you. Look at that. Do you know it would take me like 20 minutes to do this without these wheels because it's this is a heavy piece of furniture and um, it would be so awkward. And I don't worry if I put my hands on the legs or anything and um, ding the, the paint onto the legs by mistake because they're all going to be covered. And I did take pictures of this, all the details, before I started painting it because I am going to use some of the old colors that were on here as color guidelines because this was pretty much um, red, black, and green. Uh, I was asked what this piece was and while I'm probably not correct, my impression was that there's a Bavarian feel to this. I don't always research my pieces. I mean, really, I don't need to do that. But the feel of this is German, Bavarian. Um, it reminds me a lot of my own, because my, a lot of my family background is German from the Black Forest uh, area of Germany. So a lot of this feels like that part of the world where I have gone to visit my family. So I'm gonna swing this around here and yeah, I put a nice neutral white thumbprint someplace I intend to paint black. Oh well. So I'm gonna roll this around again. Okay, now if you look right here, this is one of the big chunks I had to repair. Um, I did not try to perfectly match this side what I did was smooth it out and I will sand it once it's completely cured dried tomorrow um Kelly you're watching from Germany wow as I speak of whether or not this is a German piece well, do me a favor and go to the go around Germany and see if this is right if I'm right that this is German um meanwhile I'm gonna sand this I will uh, I will seal it and then I will Actually, considering it's plastic wood, I can just prime uh, use set coat right over it. I don't even have to prime etch it. It will bond really nicely. And I'm just going to spread neutral white set coat here. And again, I'm not worrying if I'm getting any messy spots on this because 
I have my painting plans. I have plans. Oh. Oh, thank you. Um, listen, Jenna, I am always happy to give any information to help people get going. Starting is like the hardest thing. When you look at a, brand, a piece of furniture, and I have one that I started and it's going back into storage because I cannot get a finish on it that speaks to me, so it's going away. Um, you have to, the prep is the ugly stuff that has to happen before you can do anything pretty on it. But you know what prep does besides make the surface great? It introduces you to the piece. It makes you get around it and see where the flaws are and where the problem spots might be and what really, really, really has to be attended to before you can go further. Um, because you forget sometimes to do that sort of thing. Let me turn the camera to me. So as I sit here, like Jabba the Hutt on the floor, um, if you don't do the prep, it's not just about the paint bonding. If you haven't done your prep, that means you haven't introduced yourself to that piece of furniture. You haven't gone around it. You haven't, ooh, I'm sorry, sticking my fingers up. Um, you haven't um, gotten into every nook and cranny to see whether the seams are well bonded. You haven't gotten in there to see with, if there's anything that needs to be screwed, if there's any chunks out of it, if there are um, cracks that you need to repair. So there's, it's not fun, it's not pretty, but you can't get pretty if you don't have the stable underground. So, as I always say, I'm gonna remind everybody for those who've never seen, for, who have seen this before, it's a reminder for those who haven't. Prep is clean, clean, clean. If you think it's gotten wax on it, then you need to give it a scrub with uh, mineral spirits and a green scrubby, which will dis help dissolve the grease. Um, and then you need a final wipe down. Now, I do so much cleaning on this. I started with mineral spirits. Then I went to like, what did I use? I think I used crud cutter to kind of clean off all the dirt as well. And then I went back for a final wipe down with denatured alcohol to remove any residue of any other cleaner. By that time, I had cleaned this so much, I had seen all the flaws. I went in, I've repaired some chunks out of this thing, I've checked to see where some seams were loose, I, re I, I put adhesive in there to make sure that they were stable, I checked all the screws. It's a lot of work. But that if you're going to give something to your client and want to give them a promise of the quality piece of work, that's what you have to do. You have to do the nasty stuff. And then you get to the fun stuff, which is sort of what I thought, think this is. Um, I love starting the painting stuff and then seeing how it all builds up. So I've now got two coats of white set coat all around the front. I will finish up the sides of this and we'll move forward with that. Um, and then I'm gonna walk away from it for the night to let things cure up. I might hit the underside edges down here, right down in here not on this side, on the other two sides. I might hit those with black set coat, um, and then I can come in and set coat and sand this other spot in the morning, and I will be able to move on and move to different layers. I have pieces galore sitting around the studio right now. So, I hope everybody's enjoyed this. I hope you've shared. Keep sharing me, sharing me, sharing me, sharing me. I love having more people here, but it's also to help other people be better with their prep and their painting techniques. Um, I know there are other people who have ways of doing things and that doesn't necessarily seem like the same thing I'm telling you, but really what it all is, beyond the paint style, it has to be stable. Um, there's nothing worse than having a beautifully painted piece and you pick it up and you move it and half the thing chips off. You don't want to have that happen. So I think, um, I might do live tomorrow. We might move a little further forward if anybody's interested. This is going to be lots of layers of colors before I start getting into some of the stenciling. And it's a lot of fun to do this. Now, if anybody, of course, has questions, um, I'm always here. If you don't ask them now, 
you can post them to this thread you can send me a pm friendly reminder for uh, fabulous furniture finishes at idol in greensboro north carolina oh thank you thank you everybody for sharing Fabulous Furniture finishes at Greens in Greensboro, North Carolina at the Idol International Decorative Artisans League Convention at, uh, I don't remember the name of the resort, but it's the Grand, oh Lord, somebody's going to have to pop it in there, I'll put it in there, but it's the Grand something resort and <laughs> spa. I can remember the dates now, I can remember the location, but I can't remember the name of the resort, but it's an amazing thing for people who are in the creative painting businesses this is a chance to be spend um, five days thank you grand over thank you shay grand over resort and spa in greensboro north carolina this is your opportunity to spend five days with people who speak your language who will talk to you about all the stuff that goes right all the stuff that goes wrong we'll share tips techniques you can take classes with amazing instructors like me or with Helen Morris, or with all these other wonderful, uh, 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 Mary Beth Ting is doing a glass class. There is really amazing, oh no, sorry, not Mary Beth Ting. Annie Lamari got the wrong class from the wrong teacher for the wrong event. Excuse me, everybody. But you will have great chances to take great classes with really super knowledgeable instructors. And I'll be there and you can pick my brain for a all the time that I'm there and um, again sign up take my class take other people's classes learn enjoy and come back to me and uh, we'll have some more fun with this piece thanks everybody have a great afternoon bye